I receive lots and lots of asks through the vet blog about how to get into vet school, how to survive it, and what to do afterwards. So I've bundled five of these questions together for you in one video. Anonymous said, I'm an aspiring veterinarian in my senior year of high school. Any advice on how to make it so that I get into college and med school? So what do you need to do in high school to improve your odds of getting into vet school? Well, your grades are super important. You have to have a decent academic record to not only get into vet school, but to actually pass everything and graduate. Vet schools are very academically difficult. You don't want to go into them unprepared. And so their selection criteria is pretty steep. You should have a decent background in science and maths. Yes, you do need some maths because you're going to use both of them quite extensively. Biology and chemistry are probably the most important two, but you do need physics as well. And most of those subjects are also covered in the first year of the course. Really, you should check with your university of interest to see exactly what their selection criteria is and then match it. Your grades are not enough though. They're not the complete picture. You also want some out of school experience with various animal industries. And the more experience you can get, the better. And the broader that experience is, the better. We don't just want people who have only ever interacted with dogs and cats. The vet schools are looking for people that also have some experience with cattle or horses or everything else because they want vets who will graduate and go to all the areas of the industry, not just pet vets. And also while you're in high school, you're still growing as a person. So you do have to do the things that interest you just because they interest you. You don't want to be just an academic record at the end of it. You want to be a growing and developing young person because that keeps you sane and that makes you who you are. And if you do all of these things and it turns out you don't actually like the science or the maths or the various animal things you're involved in, at least you figure it out early because you can still change your mind. Anonymous said, I'm a pre-vet student from the States and I'm going to start applying for vet programs soon. I'm not sure how things are done in Australia, but do you have any tips for the interview process for vet school? So what are some tips for the actual interview process to get into vet school? Well, first of all, make sure you're showing off the very best of yourself. You're trying to join a profession, so make sure you look and act professional. Be courteous to everybody that you talk to, including other people that are there for their interviews because it might be your first opportunity to actually meet your future colleagues. You could be asked literally anything in the interview. So it's really beneficial to have a good broad understanding of the issues that are currently facing the vet profession. That might include things such as emerging diseases or antibiotic resistance, but it could also include things like anti-vaxxers. It helps if you're aware of these issues and even better if you've already developed an opinion. There are several questions that crop up fairly commonly in the interview process. When you're asked, so why do you want to be a vet? Do not say, because I love animals. One, because that should be pretty obvious. Everybody on the planet loves animals. But also, it's just not enough. It's not enough of a reason to dedicate all these years of your life to understanding vet medicine. You need something more, whether that is an actual love of medicine as well, or the science, or a desire to make a difference to those little fairy lives. You need something beyond just loving them. Another common question is, well, if you like the medicine so much, why pick vet medicine and not human medicine? And you should have a good answer for that. If you haven't considered that question before now, you probably should. You might also be asked why you've applied to this particular university. So make sure you have actually researched the university you're having an interview at. And you may also be asked, what are you going to do if you don't get into the vet school this year? 
And honestly, it would be wise to consider that before the interview anyway, because of all the people that apply, only a small percentage get in in any given year. Anonymous said, what tips can you give me for starting vet school later this year? So what are some tips that I can give you for vet school later this year? Well, first of all, and most importantly, make friends. The people in your class are going to be your future colleagues. You need them not only to get through the course, because they will keep you sane, but also to survive the rest of your professional career. Nobody is going to quite understand what you're going through like other vet students do. As part of making friends, consider pooling transport, especially when you have to go to a factory or a farm or some site distant to the university. A lot of students come from interstate or overseas and don't necessarily have a car of their own, so make sure you're looking out for each other. Also try to go to any social events whenever you can. There's not that many through the year, but they are important not just for your sanity, but also for networking. They're the things you're going to remember, and they're going to shape you as a person by the time you graduate. As part of making friends, try to feed people. Everybody likes food, especially when they're stressed out of their mind and trying to cram. But remember that a lot of people do have dietary restrictions. Some people will have allergies, some people are celiac. You will probably have vegetarians in your class, and if you didn't start with any, you will definitely end the course with them in your class. And occasionally you'll get vegans as well. Just be mindful and try to get things that everybody can eat. Another very important thing to remember when you go into vet school is that you need to let go of your academic pride. A common issue students face is that they go in and they're very used to being top of their class all the time, without terribly much effort. They get to vet school, they do the first test, and suddenly they're very, very average, and they're just not used to it. But that's what it's supposed to be. The pass mark at vet school is the pass mark for a reason. It's what you need to know to function and work as a vet. Everything else, from everything between the pass mark and the top mark, is there to spread out students. They're taking the top percentage of students and they're trying to get a distribution curve that's typical. So you will have students that are average of that top percent and students that are actually top of the top percent. And the odds of you being the very best in your class in vet school are really not that great. So just let it go. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be good enough. There's plenty of time to get better after you graduate. That said, if you can achieve the top marks, by all means, go for it. But don't drive yourself insane doing it. You still have to be a functional person at the end of the vet degree. Pancake Blanket said, I'm a freshman in high school and I'm still trying to decide what I want to do. Going into veterinary medicine is one of the biggest contenders though. What would a person usually look for in a vet? What kind of qualities play a big role in this field? Is there certain aspects of the job that would or wouldn't take a special type of person? So what qualities do I look for in a vet? Well, compassion and empathy have to be top of the list. They're super important. You need to be able to have compassion for any of your patients, no matter what species they are. Whether it's a factory farm chicken who's worth about $2, or whether it's a pampered pooch that's insured for tens of thousands of dollars. Both are deserving of compassion. You also need to have empathy, in particular for your clients. They come to you because they have a problem. They're distressed or they're worried or they're concerned and you need to be able to identify that and address it if you're going to work well. Intelligence should go without saying. You have to actually graduate and know your stuff. But once you graduate, a vet needs to have resilience and stamina to actually stick through the career. It's not for everyone. 
It's draining emotionally. It's not financially rewarding. It will wear you down. The general public is a, an interesting creature to interact with. But if you have that resilience to keep going, to get up every day, to come back, you will make it as a vet. If you don't, you will look for another option. And you also have to be a good communicator. You might think that a vet's job is taking care of animals. A lot of the time it's not. A lot of the time it's convincing another person to take care of the animal. If you can't go through that person to access the animal, you're not going to accomplish your job. It's uh, very easy to say, I want to be a vet because I love animals and I hate people. And people that have that viewpoint are often bitterly disappointed when they realize just how much of veterinary medicine is talking to your fellow human beings. It's not really a trait that you want. We also don't want arrogance. Vet medicine has a particular knack of knocking you down just when you think you had everything right. The case that doesn't follow the rules, the unexpected deaths, or just unexpected complaints from people. Vet medicine makes you humble if you're doing it right. Anonymous said, what are some good fallbacks for people with education or experience in animal medicine who need a break from the front line? Like jobs where work experience or related degrees in vet med would be an advantage. So if it doesn't all work out, what are some alternative careers that are not strictly vet related? Whether you've been in the clinics and need a break or whether you don't necessarily get in in the first place. Well, there are the related jobs, which are probably the most obvious ones. Some people will work in a clinic and then they'll leave to work in basically their own business, often offering a very specialized service, whether that's mobile acupuncture or ultrasound or some other locum fill-in type thing. Some people will move on to sell things to the vet clinics, either representing pharmaceutical products on the vet side or potentially representing suppliers and other wholesaling companies on the vet nurse side. There's certainly lots of different things that sell products to a vet clinic and somebody needs to go around and handle the returns and the technical queries and provide puppy packs and those sorts of things. There are jobs in animal welfare. They're not exactly stress-free because you're exposed to an awful lot of things that are, well, awful. But they are out there and they suit some people because you do get to make a difference. There's also various teaching positions related to the skills you've already got, but not actually in a practice, just helping people prepare to go into a practice. And then there are all the completely unrelated industries and businesses that you can get involved in, whether that's a home business or IT or studying engineering or pursuing some other interest that you had that's not vet. Sometimes that's just what you have to do to stay sane. Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope that's helped. My name's Dr. Ferox, and I'll catch you next time.